Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amundan Shaktivel, and in this video, I am gonna uh, give you another interview question, right? That I normally ask to my uh, people who are attending my interview, right? So, so it's a very simple question. Um, if you are an student, you should be able to answer this very clearly. Uh, but here is the question. So, uh, imagine that you have a method, right? That is written by your developer or your coworker, right? So, your colleague. So, uh, there is a method that takes two strings and it does something with the strings and it returns a modified string okay you may you may do concatenation the developer might do um, he can do anything right so we are not sure what it is again i want you to think about what, what this logic could be right it it is it is for your imagination okay uh, so you are asked to unit test this method by passing different parameters to this method so you you only control these two things okay uh, but you are asked to uh, you need to test this particular method. What values that you will pass to test this method? And you also need to explain me why. Again, uh, you are asked to unit test this method by passing only different values, right? You are not controlling anything else. Uh, what values will you pass to the test this method? And for each of the values that you pass, I want to know what could be the logic and why the data that you pass makes sense. For example, uh, as a first scenario, uh, I might use, uh, I might pass null string here, right? Uh, not the null string, it's it's a null. I pass the null itself. Uh, so the reason being is the, you know, uh, is the, I want to check whether the developer have actually made any uh, checks, null checks. Because if, if it is null, you might get null pointer exception. We don't want to do that. That's why I will, you know, first pass null parameter, right? um uh, to the method again uh you know there are better ways i also can you can also provide you know improvements how we can make this code much better let's say if the if the developer has written a logic to check for null even then it is better to add an annotation here at the rate non-null at uh, the parameter level so that you know you you don't have to internally do that right if you're uh you can also provide suggestions uh if you if you think you can improve this uh particular thing again if you think adding a non-null parameter at, at, at the method level and the field level uh, is a little bit, uh, you know, uh, you know, verbose, you can also add it at the package level, right? You can also, there is an annotation from Java X called uh, non-null fields. Uh, once you do that, uh, inside the entire package, uh, it will uh, make sure that it does the non-null uh, non check, okay? Again, you can also override whenever you want at, with the, at the rate nullable. Again, this kind of suggestion you can also provide. So now pause this video for a bit. Uh, I hope you all understand the question. If not, please uh, go through the question once again. So you were asked to unit test this method by passing different values of parameters. First, I pass null just to make sure if the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining uh, the developer should have used a non-null check. If it is not there, null pointer exception would be thrown, right? So this is my first test data. What other test data that you pass to these parameters? I hope you would pass this, pass this video and then write some answers. Uh, I am not looking for elaborative answers, for example, 10, 12 or all possible combination. Even if you write four or five, please make sure that you have reasons for all of them. Um, now, I will also tell uh, some of the scenarios that I would write. For this particular question again i have the same question here uh just to make sure uh to see it right so we have two strings okay the first scenario that i already mentioned is it's null comma null uh again you can pass uh, null and abcd whatever but you know for simplicity reason i am keeping both of them as same now right uh second test data that i would pass here uh is is an actual uh, string itself for example abcd fgh whatever it's a valid scenario just to make sure, uh, you know, the positive case is, is is working fine, right? And then the third scenario, what I do is I pass uh, the numbers uh, as a string, right? So whatever. That uh, again, I cannot pass one, two, three here, uh, you know, because I I have seen some people even telling me I will pass one, two, three, and two, three, four, five. Uh, because the problem is if you pass them, you will get a compile time error, not the runtime error. So we are trying to unit test this method for runtime errors, not the compile time errors, right? So that's why you can pass uh, like this. 
or you can also pass uh, floors, uh, decimals, uh, you know, again, there are multiple other combinations here. Uh, uh, the reason being, uh, we, not, we do not know what kind of string it is. It can be a first name and last name where this method can uh, return a full name, right? Uh, just by appending these two strings. In those cases, I wouldn't expect someone to have a numbers or decimals in their in their first name and last name, right? Uh, again, again, guys, imagine, okay, it's it's for your wild imaginations. Uh, that's why I'm saying, uh, you know, this is my imagination. You could also imagine something else, okay? Now, after that, I could also pass an empty string, right? So uh, there may be a check. Let's say the same example. It can be a first name and last name. I do not want my uh, user to give an empty string, right? Because I want to use this for validation. I can do it for whatever reasons. I, I will have a minimum string length check in my code, okay? So, so I would obviously expect them to have some you know, I will pass this data to make sure that, you know, uh, to test some kind of minimal string check. And also on the same front, you can also pass a maximum, like very, very long strings, right? So very long strings that, that can be also done because sometimes uh, uh, we don't want, it can be a password, right? So I, we, we don't want people to have a very big password. Uh, it can be a password. So I can also expect them to stay between eight to 16 characters, right? So those kind of stuff. Again, on the same front, uh, since it's we imagine the password, so password, I want to have uh, combinations of numbers, uh, alphabets, and also special characters, something like this, right? Uh, yeah, numbers and special characters. And what else you could think of? Uh, I could also think of uh, blank spaces. Like we have spoken about uh, the empty strings, but again, a blank string is also there, right? So you can also pass blank strings like this. Uh, on the same front, you can also pass uh, new lines, right? So you can also pass new lines. Uh, again, these kind of things, how this can break. Again, we don't want user to pass an empty string or just, you know, uh, new lines, right? It can be, uh, you know, we are we may get some kind of paragraph from them, or we can get some kind of written statements. We don't know what we are getting as part of these strings, but I don't want people to have, you know, new lines there, right? Whatever. Um, good. Uh, and then uh, we we can also uh, check uh, whether uh, it only accepts a few special characters. For example. If it is a first name and last name, if it is a first name and last name, uh, I want to make sure that it accepts uh, apostrophe because uh, you know it is very common to have something like uh, Mick, Ronald, or whatever, uh, something like this, right? So people might use apostrophes uh, in their first name and last name. So I want to allow them, but all other characters I don't want to allow. So these kind of checks I can also do uh, just to make sure these things are valid properly. Uh, two. I can also make sure that I, I don't allow any spaces within the name. So I use something like this. The reason being, if it is an email field, okay, uh, I don't want someone to have spaces in their email. Field. So, uh, you know, even though these kind of things will be happening at the front end, uh, but again, I do not know where this method is, whether it lies for a front end validation or a back end validation. I do not know all about, all I know is I am passing two strings. So I this is my wild imagination. I don't want to allow uh, spaces if there is a if this is an email uh, field or something. Again, I also want to check uh, whether it has same characters. For example, this can be uh, a password and confirm password, and I want to make sure uh, they both are same. Uh, but in this case, it should return boolean or something. Uh, but again, I would still pass them and see. You know what happens right so uh and what else uh you could think of uh i think these are all some of the valid stuff that i did um anything else mm. again uh i i also want to see uh how this kind of validation like if they want to validate whether it has uh combination of alphabets and the special characters uh 
you know maybe i uh, sometimes i i'll cross question the candidates uh, how they may do this validation okay i want to validate whether it has numbers uh, you know uh, alphabets and also special characters right or i want to validate whether the string uh, doesn't have uh, any special characters uh, other than this apostrophe how will i do that uh, so the kind of answer that what i would look for is is um, is people uh, using ascii codes uh, basically to find whether it is an apostrophe or or something that lies between the ascii range of alphabets again you don't expect people to say 95 to exact ascii ranges because it's it's you know it i, I it's not really possible right so if it, if you know just ascii is the is a answer that i'm looking for uh, if they say you know i would look for an ascii values i will iterate this cat, uh, string First, I will convert the string to character array. I will iterate one by one, and then I look for the uh, each of the characters within the ASCII range. Okay, these kind of answers that that I might uh, look for. Again, if I have missed some of the scenarios, <clears throat> please do drop them in the in the comments, and I also provide the reasoning. Again, you can also think about these kind of topics, and then try to write test cases around it so that you can improve the uh, you know the the thinking capabilities. Right, so. You can also conduct games within your friends, your colleagues. You can give them a puzzle and ask them to solve it. Again, all this critical thinking uh, we used to do in the past, but after coming to IT, uh, we stopped doing them. Right? Naturally, we tend to behave, uh, you know, very robotic and and do our daily tasks. And and these kind of uh, fun activities can de definitely help you to go to your past, the best days that you had, where you you imagine a lot of wild things and then you know without any restrictions so i hope this video is useful uh, uh, let me know in the comments if you are if you're you know finding this useful please do subscribe to the channel we are nearing the 10,000 mark but we are not touching it for a very long time so do hit on the like and subscribe button and share it with your friends i'll see you guys in another great video until bye bye uh, until then bye 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 guys